நண்பர்களுக்கு வணக்கம் எல்லோரும் நன்றாக இருப்பீர்கள் This program is brought to you by Guruji TV. This YouTube video is a translation of the Tamil video of a renowned astrologer, Jyotish Mahaguru Aditya Guruji. The link of the original version, that is the Tamil video, is given in the description box of this video. In my last video, I explained about why Mercury should not reside in Scorpio and the consequences of such a planetary position in which criteria the moon can deliver benefits while it resides in the Scorpio which is a debilitated house for it and much more intricacies. In this video I'm going to explain the effects of the ascendant lord in the Scorpio house and the effects of conjunction of different planets and I'm going to share much more intricacies of certain concepts of astrology. When Mars resides in the house of Scorpio, it will be in the 8th house from the Aries. If the native is Aries ascendant and Mars resides in the 8th house from its own house, it is good. Have you ever thought about the reason? If the native is an Aries ascendant and the house lord is in the 8th house, from its own house, then Mars will not deliver the characteristics of the house of Aries. The fiery aspect of the Aries will be missing in such a planetary position. In addition to this, the Mars will be in the feminine house, that is Scorpio, therefore Mars will be of mature character. When you understand the characteristics of the house, and significance of the planet, you can predict in which state Mars is in. The Mars will be in the 8th house from its own house Aries, which signifies the fire, the activeness, and of course Aries is a masculine sign. When Mars resides in the house of Scorpio, it is in the feminine sign, and it is a mature house. This is the way you have to make predictions about the planets that have two own houses. There will be a duality of the characteristics of the planet. How will we predict the effects of the planet that owns two houses? How do you predict the nature of a person and how a person would behave? How do you predict what Mars is going to deliver to the native of Aries or Scorpio ascendant? The answer is you have to make predictions based on Bhavat Bhavam, based on the significance and the house effects. Knowing all these, you can make complete predictions. Therefore, how do we make predictions? When Mars resides in the house of Scorpio, it will be in the 8th house from its own house Aries. Therefore, Mars resides in the house where there is a lot of patience, elegance and of course it is a fixed sign. Therefore, when the native is an Aries ascendant and the ascendant lord resides in the house of Scorpio, then the native will behave in contrary to the original character of the Aries ascendant. The house of Aries is very active, less patient, etc. Whereas the house of Scorpio has patience, elegance and it is a female sign. Therefore, when Mars resides in the house of Scorpio, for the native of Aries ascendant, the native will not behave like the Aries ascendant, rather the native will behave like Scorpio. Consequently, the native will be patient and will think before doing something and there will be an elegance in their action. Therefore, in order to make predictions for the planet that owns two houses, you have to include the factor Bhavat Bhavam. The next planet that I am going to explain is Mercury. When Mercury resides in the house of Scorpio, then it will be in the sixth house from its own house Gemini, 
that is Miduna. Please try to understand why I say that the house of Scorpio is not a favorable one for Mercury. When Mercury resides in the house of Scorpio, then the house of Scorpio is the sixth house from Mercury's own house Gemini, which signifies the wisdom, and it will be in the third house from its another own house Virgo, which signifies the intelligence. Now, do you understand why we say that Mercury should not reside in the house of Scorpio? As per Bhavat Bhavam, the Mercury should not reside in the house of Scorpio. Let us put forward a question why Mercury should not reside in the house of Scorpio. It is not a good planetary position when Mercury is in the sixth house from its own house of Gemini, which signifies wisdom, and when it is in the third house from the house of Kanya, that is Virgo, which signifies intelligence. When Mercury resides in Scorpio, it will deliver benefits only if, which is a very, very rare occasion, the Mercury gets Parivartan with Mars. That is, when Mars and Mercury mutually exchange their houses, for example, when Mars resides in Virgo and Mercury resides in Scorpio. When the Mercury resides in the house of Scorpio, which is the eighth house of the natural zodiac, it is not good. In the natural zodiac, the house of Virgo is the sixth house. The lord of the sixth house, that is Virgo, should not reside in the eighth house of the natural zodiac, which is the house of Scorpio. Here, there will be a combination of sixth and eighth house, which indicates the lack of intelligence. A hasty man never wants bow. In Tamil we say, There is a traditional proverb that says, No one is as angry as the person who is wrong. Why I mentioned the word anger? Because the house of Scorpio, whose planet Lord Mars signifies anger. Therefore, the planet that signifies intelligence should not reside in the house that signifies anger. Therefore, we say the proverb that no one is angry as the person who is wrong. When Mercury resides in the house of Scorpio, it resides in the house of anger. Therefore, the Mercury should not reside in the house of Scorpio. When Mercury resides in the house of Scorpio, it is not good. In case if you find a person to be still intelligent in whose natal chart Mercury resides in the house of Scorpio, then Mercury would have got Subhatva or the Dispositor, that is the house lord of the Scorpio, Mars, will be exalted. When the Dispositor is exalted, then the Mars will be spoiled by making the planet Mercury strong in Scorpio. While there are rules, of course, the exceptions also exist. You might wonder, observing few people, how they could be intelligent when the Mercury in their natal chart resides in the house of Scorpio. How is it possible? If you observe closely the natal chart, you can see that the Mercury would have got Subhatva. The Mercury would be in conjunction with Venus, or under the aspect of the strong Jupiter or the Mercury will be in connection with the waxing moon or at least the dispositor that is the house lord of the Scorpio, Mars will be in good strength. Either the dispositor will be exalted or the dispositor will be in any other house with good strength. Remember that the dispositor should not be in the same house with Mercury. Therefore, you have to make predictions based on the following factors, the dispositor, Bhavat Bhavam, and the strength of the dispositor, etc. And finally, of course, the Subhatva. As per Bhavat Bhavam, I would say that Mercury should not reside in the house of Scorpio. The next planet that I am going to explain is Jupiter. Let me explain the effect of the planet Jupiter when it resides in the house of Scorpio. This house is a favorable house to Jupiter. 
when Jupiter resides in the house of Scorpio, it will reside in the 12th house to its own house, Sagittarius, and to another own house, which is Pisces, it will be in the 9th house, and the Jupiter will also aspect its own house, Pisces. The house of Scorpio is such a friendly house to Jupiter. When the Jupiter resides in the house of Scorpio, Jupiter will be very happy. Though the Jupiter is in the 12th house from its own house Sagittarius, it is good because Jupiter has Kendra Dibadi Dosha for Upaya Lagna. Though the Jupiter is in the 12th house, from its own house, Sagittarius, the Jupiter that resides in the house of Scorpio will strengthen the house of Pisces by its aspect. Therefore, based on which house the Pisces is to the ascendant, Jupiter will deliver its effects. You have to identify based on which ascendant is the native. In case if you are the native of Pisces Ascendant, then it is such a great auspicious position for Jupiter. Let me explain the reason. For the native of Pisces Ascendant, the Ascendant Lord resides in the house of Scorpio, which is the ninth house to the Ascendant house and in addition to this, a friendly house as well. And the Jupiter that resides in the Scorpio aspect the ascendant house which is Pisces and strengthens it. It is such a great benefit when the ascendant lord is a natural benefit and sits in the ninth house and strengthens the ascendant house. Therefore in any situation when Jupiter resides in the house of Scorpio it is good. This is a friendly house of Jupiter. The house of Leo is the most friendly house to the Jupiter and this is the next friendly house to Jupiter. Therefore, when Jupiter resides in the house of Scorpio, which is a friendly house, then it is really auspicious. When Jupiter resides in the house of Scorpio, the Jupiter will be very happy, will feel very comfortable, since this is a friendly house, provided it is not Pabatwa. Jupiter should not be in conjunction with Saturn in the house of Scorpio. Jupiter should not be in conjunction with Rahu. When Jupiter is in conjunction with Rahu, it is called as Guru Chandal Yoga and definitely there must not be such a conjunction in the house of Scorpio. Now, let me explain about the effect of the planet Venus. The house of Scorpio is not a friendly house to Venus. However, Venus will be in the second house from its own house Libra and in the seventh house from its another own house Taurus. When Venus resides in the house of Scorpio, it will be uncomfortable. When Venus resides in the house of Scorpio, it will be favorable for the native of Taurus ascendant. If there is Parivartan of Mars with Venus, then it is an added benefit. Whenever the planet aspects its own house, then the planet will reside in the enemy's house. Therefore, for the native of Rishabh Ascendant, that is Taurus Ascendant, when Venus resides in the 7th house from the Ascendant house, that is in the house of Scorpio, it is a benefit. When Venus resides in the house of Scorpio, it is good for the native of Taurus Ascendant. It is favorable for the native of Taurus Ascendant as the aspect of the Venus will strengthen the house of Ascendant. The house of Scorpio also will become Subhatva due to the presence of Venus, which is a natural benefit. Please try to check which Ascendant you are. You have to check whether you were born as an Ascendant of Jupiter team or as an Ascendant of the Venus team. Therefore, based on these concepts, you can make predictions. When Venus resides in the house of Scorpio, since Venus aspects its own house Taurus, it is a favorable position for the native of Taurus Ascendant. At the same moment, 
when venus resides in the house of scorpio it will be in an uncomfortable state because this house is inimical to venus the major planetary period of the venus will not give good effects though venus aspects its own house taurus it will strengthen the ascendant house but based on the concept that the natural benefit should not be in the quadrant house and that too in an enemical house this planetary position of venus is not good the ascendant will be strong during the major planetary period of venus but the dasha period will not be good for example let us take the native as the taurus ascendant and if venus resides in the star of vishaka then it will deliver very bad effects if venus resides in the star of visagam that is vishaka then it will deliver very bad effects when venus resides in the star of anushyam and ketai that is anuradha and jeshta then there will be benefit to a certain extent based on the star where the planet resides you have to predict the effects of the planet therefore when venus resides in the house of scorpio it is actually a dual state in brief you have to predict that this house is not a friendly house to venus well i had explained about the planets jupiter venus and now let me explain about the planet saturn the house where saturn should not reside is the house of scorpio this house is called as sama nicha vidu the concept is this house is an enemical house because saturn gets debilitated in the house of aries and scorpio is another house owned by mars mars and saturn are such enemical planets both the planets does not get along well at all this will be such an unfavorable planet conjunction because saturn gets debilitated in another house of mars which is aries since saturn gets debilitated in one of the houses of mars which is aries the scorpio is called as sama nicha vidu the sama nicha vidu literally means equal debilitation house an own house of a planet in whose another house in which a planet gets debilitated cannot be favorable for the debilitated planet mars is the house lord of both aries and scorpio among which one house is where saturn gets debilitated since the house of scorpio is also owned by mars this house cannot be a favorable house to saturn saturn will be agitated in the house of mars saturn gets exalted in the house of libra and it crosses the exaltation house when it comes to the house of scorpio i have mentioned why the native of scorpio moon rashi suffer a lot in their life during sade sati during the sade sati the native of scorpio moon rashi will suffer the most and this is the intricacy behind that the native who will suffer the most next to the vrikshik moon rashi that is scorpio moon rashi is the native of aries moon rashi when the native of aries rashi goes through the janma shani then the saturn will topple their life saturn will agonize the native of aries rashi natives saturn will behave like a drunkard who continues to drink alcohol saturn will behave like a rowdy consuming a lot of alcohol in a bar when saturn resides in the house of scorpio you have to treat saturn like a drunkard who is completely intoxicated and forgot about himself you cannot predict the action of such a drunkard that is how the saturn will behave when saturn is in conjunction with rahu in the house of scorpio it will totally spoil the house it will spoil the longevity of the person because this is the eighth house of the kala purusha which signifies longevity you have to check the longevity by all means 
When you want to check the longevity, you have to check the 8th house to the ascendant and also the house of Scorpio, which is the 8th house of the Kala Purusha, that is the natural zodiac. When the house of Scorpio is Pabatva, it will affect the longevity of the person, it will affect everything and it will affect the status of the brother, it will affect the courage, it will affect the vigor, it will affect all the characteristics of the Mars. The house that Saturn should not reside is the house of Scorpio. What is the antidote for such a planetary position? Of course, the Subhatva. If only Saturn is aspected by Jupiter with good strength, for example, let us say Jupiter from Pisces aspecting the house of Scorpio, then the Saturn will have some control on itself and it will behave good. There is another point that you have to note here. When Saturn resides in the house of Scorpio, it will aspect the house of Leo by its 10th aspect, which is not a favorable one. The situation is the Saturn is aspecting the father of the native. I have published a few premium videos regarding the aspect of the Saturn. When Saturn resides in the house of Scorpio, it aspects the house of Leo by its 10th aspect. The Saturn will aspect the house of Taurus, which is a friendly house by its 7th aspect. And the Saturn will aspect its own house Capricorn by its 3rd aspect. The 10th aspect of the Saturn will be much worse in this case. The planetary position, that is, when Saturn resides in the house of Scorpio, it will spoil the ascendant. It will spoil the status of the father and it will spoil the house of Leo. Whenever Saturn aspects the house of Leo, there will be a small setback in the rapport or the significance related to the status of the father. When the house of the Leo is aspected by Saturn, definitely there will be a shortcoming regarding the status of the father. Before making a prediction, you have to check the ninth house to the ascendant and also check the status of the sun. When the Saturn resides in the house of Scorpio, by its 10th aspect, it affects the house of Leo, the status of the father, it will forbid the paternal properties, will affect the rapport with the father or the father will not behave as a father at all. Astrology is nothing but the connection or linking of different rules and exceptions. When Saturn resides in the house of Scorpio, you have to check the houses where the Saturn aspects and you have to check the status of the Saturn in the house of Scorpio. For example, where the Saturn is in conjunction with Rahu, the aspects on the Saturn, etc. Some subscribers requested me to explain the effect of the aspect of Jupiter when it is retrograde. Please do not consider the retrograde of the Jupiter. I can see one of my subscribers commenting, I believe it is Mrs. Lalita. I hope you know that I don't give importance to the status like the own house or inimical house when the planet is retrograde. I have often repeated this point in many of my videos. I have published many videos regarding the aspects of the benefic when it is retrograde and in an enemical house, etc. Only the exalted retrograde and the debilitated retrograde gives contrasting effects. Whichever planet is retrograde, whether it is Jupiter or any other planet, only the exalted retrograde and the debilitated retrograde delivers contrasting effects. I address the exalted retrograde and the debilitated retrograde as contrasting one. I have written certain articles about this and I have also published few videos regarding the same. I really don't want to bore you by speaking the same topic again and again. I have published four to five videos regarding the retrograde of the planets. Therefore, I don't want to explain that topic here in this video. The next planet that I'm going to explain is Rahu. Another planet which should not reside in the house of Scorpio is Rahu. 
Rahu should not reside in the house except Aries, Taurus, Cancer, Virgo and Capricorn. Therefore, Rahu should not reside in the house of Scorpio. Rahu should not reside in the house of Scorpio, which is straight opposite to the house of Taurus. Rahu can reside in the movable sign of Mars and Saturn and Rahu should not reside in the fixed sign of Mars and Saturn. The Rahu should not reside in the fixed houses whose planet lord is Malafic. If it resides so, then it does not deliver good effects. Therefore, Rahu should not reside in the fixed house whose planet lord is Malafic. Rahu can reside in the house of Aries and house of Capricorn that is Mesh and Makar but Rahu should not reside in the house of Scorpio or in the house of Aquarius which are fixed houses of Mars and Saturn respectively. If we imagine planets as humans, the Rahu that resides in the house of Taurus is a very good man. The Rahu that resides in the house of Scorpio is such a bad guy. I often say this following point that I have repeated in many of my videos. Whenever the Rahu gets the aspect of the Saturn or the connection of the Saturn, or to add further, whenever Rahu gets the aspect or connection of Saturn or Mars, it will be ready to deliver the bad effects. Since the house of Scorpio is the house owned by Mars, the Rahu that resides in the house of Scorpio, if it gets aspected by Saturn or conjunction with Saturn, then Rahu will make a person financially low to the extent they will lose everything and become a pauper. This will happen even if it is a native of Gemini Ascendant. I often reiterate a point that the only functional benefit for the native of Gemini Ascendant is Rahu. Yet, there are many exceptions beyond the rules. Based on such exceptions, the Rahu that resides in the house of Scorpio is not good. In contrary to this, the planet that has the contrasting effect to Rahu, which is Ketu, if it resides in the house of Scorpio, it is good. In brief, Rahu should not reside in the house that is owned by Mars. Rahu should not reside in the Stira Rashi, that is fixed house of the Saturn or the fixed house of Mars. In case if Rahu resides in the house of Scorpio, with the aspect of Saturn or in conjunction with the Saturn, then the Rahu is going to make the native a pauper. There is another situation where if Rahu resides in the fixed house of the Saturn, that is Aquarius, and if it is getting aspected by the Mars or is in conjunction with the Mars, again the same bad effect is going to happen, that is Rahu will make the person totally financially down and moneyless. With this planetary position, the person should never undergo the major planetary period of Rahu. Having said this, based on the planetary position with above combinations, please do not consider that Rahu in the third house or the eleventh house etc. This particular rule cannot be applied in this situation at all. This sort of situation is where Rahu will nullify whatever is said in the original dictum. Therefore, the Rahu that resides in the house of Scorpio is not a good guy. In case if Rahu resides in the house of Scorpio with Subhatva, then it is okay. Rahu will deliver good effects when it is aspected by Jupiter from Pisces though it does not deliver the greatest benefits. You have to check the differences in the level of Subhatva. When Rahu that resides in the house of Taurus, with the aspect of Jupiter, it delivers incredible benefits. It will deliver innumerable benefits. When Rahu resides in the house of Scorpio with the aspect of Jupiter and the connection of Venus, what would happen? The Rahu will deliver the effects through the significance of the Mars. It will lead the native to be foolhardy, 
not to think before acting, not really thoughtful and then it will deliver all the benefits. This is the character of the Rahu that resides in the house of Scorpio. The Rahu will reflect the exact nature of the mass. Rahu is a planet that will act like the lord of the house. Therefore, what it happen? The Rahu that resides in the house of Scorpio is not a good guy. If Rahu is in conjunction with Saturn, then the life of the person is a big flop. In case of Rahu is Subhatva in the house of Scorpio, then Rahu will deliver all the significance of the Mars during its major planetary period and based on Subhatva, the Rahu will deliver the benefits. However, when Rahu resides alone in the house of Scorpio without Subhatva, it is not good. The house of Scorpio will be totally spoiled when the Rahu resides in the house of Scorpio. As I mentioned already, you have to judge the effects of the Rahu or the benefits of Rahu based on auspicious houses of Rahu such as Aries, Taurus, Cancer, Virgo and Capricorn. That is Mesh, Rishab, Kark, Kanya and Makar. When Rahu resides in other houses, it definitely has to be in connection with Venus or Jupiter. Please make predictions keeping in mind that the numbers are not really important in certain cases. Therefore, please do not make hasty conclusion that when Rahu resides in the 3rd house, 6th house, 10th house and 11th house, it will deliver benefits consequently. Astrology is not merely numbers. Please remember this point when you make predictions and now let me explain the effects of the planet Ketu. The Ketu that resides in the house of Scorpio is good. I hope you know the Arohana and Avrohana that is the shadow of the northern node and the shadow of the southern node. Therefore, based on this concept, Ketu is a good guy when it resides in the houses right from Libra to Pisces and when Rahu resides in the houses right from Aries to Virgo then it is good. Please try to understand this and based on this concept when Ketu resides in the house of Libra or Scorpio then it delivers good effects. The house of Scorpio is very special. When Ketu resides in the house of Virgo, Scorpio and Aquarius, then Ketu will deliver benefits. Ketu will deliver benefits only in these three houses. When the house of Scorpio becomes the 6th house to the ascendant or 12th house to the ascendant and when Ketu resides in these houses, it will deliver benefits. The 6th house and the 12th house or the houses where Rahu and Ketu should reside. If you see this planetary position, then the native is a fortunate person. When Rahu resides in the axis of 6th and 12th, then Rahu will deliver great benefits. In addition to this, Rahu should attain Subhatva by the connection of Jupiter. In any situation, when Rahu and Ketu gets the connection of Jupiter or Venus, then they deliver great benefits. Therefore, when Ketu resides in the house of Scorpio, it will deliver benefits. It does not really matter where the Ketu is, whether the house of Scorpio is an ascendant house or which Bhava it is. The Ketu will make the Bhava Subhatva and it will deliver wisdom. I have already mentioned that the house of Scorpio is the house of secrets. This is the house of hidden secrets. Ketu is a planet that helps to explore the hidden secrets of Jnana Shastra. When Ketu resides in the house of Scorpio, it helps to explore the hidden secrets of Jnana Shastra. In other words, you can explore another dimension of the Shastras as this house is the 8th house of the Kala Purusha, that is natural zodiac. This is the fact. This can be applied to any field merely not related to wisdom. 
even if you are working as a tailor you can explore a lot in your domain you will explore the intricacies of your domain and you will become an expert in your field where you work you will definitely find an unexplored dimension of this domain by the help of ketu that resides in the house of scorpio all these are possible it also depends on which ascendant you are which bhava is this to the ascendant well i have explained a lot about the house of scorpio and the native of scorpio ascendant let me publish a lot of live programs like this to explain the concepts and the intricacies of astrology then there are many people who wants to know which almanac is the better one whether it is vakya ganita panchang or drik ganita panchang in my next video i will touch on certain topics that you wanted to know i'm planning to give a very lengthy explanation regarding these two systems that is vakya ganita panchang and drik ganita panchang the astrologer mr chinna rash who's also my friend is a follower of vakya ganita panchang and i'm a keen follower of drik ganita panchang i'm planning to explain my point of view regarding the differences between these two panchang for the subscribers who follows me many people have been showing interest and waiting for such a video and i'm planning to publish videos regarding this well i'm going to also explain the favorable dashas and professions that could bring fortune to the native of scorpio ascendant in my next video well this is question time will a person be intelligent when mercury is in scorpio with no subhatva no parivartan and weak dispositor please write your answers in the comment section of this video thank you the link of aditya guruji's website is given below in the description box of this video that is accessible by both ios and android users the link of the google play store app is also given in the description box that is available for only android users the tamil version of this video is also available please check the description box and write your feedback to astro.writeus@gmail.com thank you